Hi, everyone. My name is Kissinger Sunday, and I'm a student of the machine learning program for Black and Indigenous students, and also a PhD student um, at Dalhousie University. Um, I'll be presenting on a topic for casting auto insurance claim amounts using a robust regression model. Machine learning algorithms are often used for prediction, um, which helps in identifying risks and proper planning. Um, for this study, we will be using the regression model. And um, of course, in figure one, um, we can see the linear regression model, which uses a line to establish relationship between the independent and well, the dependent. Kissinger, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I think you're changing your slides, but we're not seeing the change in the slides. Oh, you can see it. Uh, yeah, yes. try to reshare um, maybe go back and try yeah. to reshare your screen. Sometimes uh, Zoom does that. If you try to reshare it, it might work again. Okay, can you see the screen now? Uh, we can see the screen. Can you click on the second slide? Um, can you see it? Is it moving? Um, Is it changing? We, no, we, we see the regular, um, like not the presentation mode, the regular mode. So maybe what you can do is we can just uh, go back to your just the regular mode and then you okay. don't have to do the full screen. Just You can just present uh, with the regular mode and then we should be able to see it. Okay, okay, all right. So I'm just using the regular mode. So okay. you can see the regular mode? Yeah, so I can see your mouse if you click on the second slide. Okay, so if you click on one of those slides on, yep, yeah, I think that's okay. fine. Let's just stay in okay. this. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. All right, All right no problem. Um, the linear regression here uses um, a, a line to represent relationship between the independent and the dependent variables, as you can see the equation. Um, the problem actually arises where we have inadequate prediction models, you know, where um, companies leverage on these models for prediction, which often uh, brings um, inaccurate results, um, which of course leads to um, loss in potential customers. So in our study, we tried to propose the use of um, a gradient boosting regressor, which is an assemble method, this method leverages on um, the prediction of um, weaker classifiers in order to enhance its own um, prediction. So um, we try to visualize our data set, which we obtained from the Kaggle database. And um, from the descriptive statistics, we could see that um, it has 9,134 records and 40 columns. Um, of course, um, the total claim amount here is a dependent variable that we are trying to predict, and it has um, um, other independent variables. You can see the main the standard deviation and um, other um, values. Um, one of the conditions for regression, uh, for using regression, is to actually check for normality. And we used the Shapiro work test to check whether um, our data is normal. And we discovered in fig 2 a that it's not normal. So we used the box Cox transformation to normalize our data sets as represented in fig 2 b here. Um, we um, went further to check the second assumption of um, the regression, which of course is um, there should be no multicollinearity. Um, that simply means that the independent variables should truly be independent. And we did this using um, the heat map for the correlations. And um, the values here um, indicate that um, we can actually proceed with, um, other, visualiz with other visualizations. Because um, we can see um, values from minus one to 0 0.3 um, are weak. Well, if it's more than 0 0.3 and less than 0 0.7, um, it's actually moderate. But if it's greater than 0 0.7, that means the correlation is um, very strong. 
In our own case here, we can see the values here. I think the highest one here is 0 0.63, which is below 0 0.7. And we can conclude that the um, independent variables are actually truly independent. And we went further to visualize um, our independent variables using um, the bar charts. And of course, from the location code feature, we can see that um, the suburban um, um, location tends to be um, highly occupied by um, the people as compared to others. Um, for the employment status, we can see that um, a lot of people are actually employed um, in this particular data set. Um, we also went further to check the gender and we can see um, the population of the female and the male tends to be almost um, equal. However, we got something striking in Fig 5 here, where we use the points plot to check the relationship between um, the gender and our dependent variable total claim amount. Now we discovered that the male population here actually spent more on the total claim amount as compared to the female. Probably because the male gender tends to be um, more employed compared to that of the female. We also went further to use the point plots um, to check other independent features. Um, we can see for the state here, we can see um, the Washington and the Nevada has um, have um, total high high total um, claim amount as compared to other others living in other regions. Um, for the coverage, we can see that those on the premium package spends more on the total claim amount as compared to um, others. And for the education, we can see those uh, with high school or below tends to also pay more as compared to others. So we also visualize using the swamp plots where we could see that those that complained more, you know, have pay lower um, total claim amount compared to those that complain less. For our model, we used the um, gradient posting regressor and this works by um, minimizing the loss function um, for in order to build a prediction model from the independent features. What this simply means is that, for example, in FIG9, we have a weak learner two leverages on the weaknesses of this prediction accuracy of learner one in order to enhance its own prediction. And that is how it goes until we have um, a prediction that is actually boosted. So in the, the model description, we trained our model using 80% um, training data set and test sets contains 20%. And after training the model, and um, of course, after the model must have learned, we now made prediction on the test set, which happens to be the unseen set, unseen um, data set. And the results of the evaluation, um, where we used the mean squared error, the mean absolute error, and the coefficient of determination here. For the mean squared error and mean absolute error, which shows the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. Um, of course, lower value for these um, mean squared error and mean absolute error should indicate a better fit, while um, a, the coefficient of determination here um, actually shows the accuracy of our model. And um, a higher value here indicates a better fit. So we compared um, our model with the linear model, the rich model, the lasso model, and the elastic net model. And um, we can see from here that our gradient um, boosting model outperformed other models by 85% degree accuracy. And um, of course, it has um, lower um, mean squared error and um, low, very low um, mean absolute error as compared to um, other models. What this means actually is that um, when we take any future of of any, when we take any feature in our data set, any independent variable, we can actually predict the actual value with 85% um, degree of accuracy. 
In conclusion, um, we can see from our study that the gradient boosting repressor actually works well and outperformed other models in prediction. And the implication of this study is that um, companies, insurance companies can continue or can use this particular um, model for prediction, which um, can give them um, a good degree of accuracy. And um, of course, the future work is to see how we can um, enhance the model for better prediction accuracy. Okay, so this is our bibliography. Thank you for listening. So 